Hello Robotics Notes fans, happy August 26th, it is 10.06am, yesterday's episode was half an hour late, not because I forgot to edit it or render it, I did all that work, and then I forgot to upload it. <laughs> so uh, hopefully I won't forget that this time. <clears throat> when I say half an hour late, by the way, I mean, um, half an hour past the usual upload time. It was still August 25th, so we don't, the run is still going, don't worry. It was just half an hour past the regular time. Let's load the data. Not a single vehicle passes through the tiny hilltop. <laughs> There rests a quiet park, and above it a clear blue sky. Thunderhead slowly drifts in the wind. The horizon rests far in the distance. I thought the scenery might have d drastically changed after what happened yesterday, but that's not the case. In fact, it's so peaceful it makes me wonder if what happened was just an all just an illusion. It's a beautiful day. It's not raining anymore, so it's clear. <sighs> um, and it's so clear out that it's actually kind of obnoxious. I forget where I am for a moment and gaze up into the sky aimlessly. I'm a little relieved that nothing has changed. Anyway, I quickly jump down from the stairs. Yep. Then climb over the fence and jump. I stretch my body out after I land. And that's it for today. After searching around for blah, after searching around the antenna tower for a bit, I did, in fact, find another monopole. Unable to ignore the problem any further, I climbed up to the top of the tower again and moved the antenna. Now there won't be any more stray monopoles, at least for today. I'm thinking of continuing this all throughout the month of August. Akio and Mom will probably get mad at me again. But as long as I don't try climbing it during a typhoon, I should be fine. But man, the view from up top is something else. It's nicer than the view from the sightseeing tower nearby. I can see all the way out to Minamitanecho. Climbing this thing during the typhoon royally sucked. But today the wind is gentle, and the weather is great, so I had nothing to fear and could leisurely enjoy the view. The world hasn't changed. Maybe that's because I'm on this remote island off the coast of Japan. In fact, it's almost disappointing. Though to be fair, the Kamijima reports have had an effect on me. It's true that I was trembling on the inside in fear that the, some global catastrophe might take place. I thought that leaking the the bleh, I thought that the leaking of the final episode might tr be the trigger for something, but in the end, nothing happened. <laughs> Only a handful of people are freaking out over it. Most people don't care about some random old anime. <laughs> There's only one thing that's changed in my immediate surroundings, and that's Akiho being in shock and the club being on break. Apparently, she can't even eat right now. Once I'm off the tower, I head to my usual spot. Normally when I settle here, I go into kill ballad mode. But today my motivation gets cut short after 10 matches. Maybe yesterday's events are mentally affecting me more than I realize. Sorry if I'm a little coffee, a little... <clears throat> anything today. I, uh, I'm pretty beat up right now, not gonna lie. I got like a lower back thing too. It was I'm a big mess right now. Either way, I'm still better off compared to others. I mean, look at Akiho. And what about Frau? Come to think of it, I haven't spoken to her at all. I'm betting the mental damage she sustained is a lot worse than Akiho's. She discovered that the top three KB players have been dead for six months. <sighs> <sighs> And then right after that, the last episode of her mom's anime leaked. And that, as the shit icing on the crap cake 
the actual episode is a tragedy that rejects what the show is about. If Frau told me about how 13 anime staffers were- If what Frau told me about how 13 anime staffers were murdered before the episode aired is true, that makes the meaning behind yesterday's video all the more heavy. Fans online who had been disappointed for four years have made a total of a- a total 100, one, bleh, a total 180 and are dissecting the video. I went through a few analysis sites yesterday. Apparently the episode u utilizes subliminal effects. It's a really old technique with questionable effectiveness. But there's no doubt that it's being intentionally used in this instance. The fact that I immediately assume the Travistock Institute is involved means that Kokomijima has his claws in me. The video was up to Nico Nico video, but the perp used a burner account so it'd be pointless to try and track him. I wonder who uploaded it. The most suspicious person is Minami Kugori, the missing director, which would mean that Frau's mom is alive. The Kamijima reports, in addition to the similarities with the leaked episode, I'm curious about how Ko Kamijima was pursued by the committee and, dis and the institute, not to mention his mysterious death. I have a bad feeling about all this. I don't know why or how. Just don't feel good about it. I lean against the rusted fence and let the wind blow over me. If I apply too much weight, it'll break and I'll fall. I need to be careful. Ah. Then that I notice a familiar face walking down the street. She's pushing her bright emerald blue bicycle without, along without riding it. It's Tanoji san! She's coming up the hill from the TNSC and cutting through the park to head to Minamitane Cho. Wonder why she's pushing her bike. I watch her from the observatory without calling out to her, and she seemingly decides to take a rest in the park lot. Maybe something happened. Oi! When I call out to her, tenoji san immediately notices and waves at me. Hiya, Yashio-kun! Can I go up there too? What? She's coming up here? Doesn't seem like she has any business with me or anything. Be my guest! tenoji san comes jogging up, her steps light as a feather. Be careful with the stairs, the rust did pretty bad. Whew, thanks. After hearing my warning, she timidly makes her way up the steps. But her usual smile returns in no time. Whoa, what a great view! Look, you can see the VAB from here. I know, I'm a local after all. She's such a carefree person. It's almost as if she has no idea what happened yesterday. But maybe this is normal for someone who's not that into anime. Akio said Gun Viral is pretty mainstream, but it's still four years old. At the end of the day, anime is just fiction. Regardless of the content of the mythical final episode, it won't affect reality. If I didn't know Frau or the links to the Kamijima reports, I'd probably have no interest in Gun Viral's final ep. It's my first time coming up here. I always just pass by in front of it. The road has a lot of ups and downs, so it's great exercise. But you were pushing your bike earlier, weren't you? Did something happen? Oh, how you My tire blew out. While I was going uphill, I found a beautiful flower on the side of the road. It was a hibiscus, so I was a bit entranced, and I ended up running over a sharp rock. It was a total trap. But I was able to take my time and enjoy the flowers, so all swell that ends well. They really remind you that you're in the south. So once I get over the hill, I'll be in the center of Minamitane, right? There must be a bike shop there. But I was getting kind of tired, so I thought I'd take a break. You know, they'll come to you if you call them. Huh? Really? But I don't know their number. I do. What? 
W why? I'm a local. There are three bike shops in the area, and all of them have helped me out. I even know the shop owners by face. Would you like me to give you their phone number? Hi. Yes, please. Even I feel pretty good having someone so cheerfully nod their head at me. Tenoji-san smells a sweat. Is she the type who doesn't care about that kind of thing? What a weird woman. She kidnaps us the day we first meet. She works at an amazing place like JAXA demonstrated and demonstrated her wealth of knowledge during our Model 2 meeting. And she's only a few years older than us. She wears a smile on her face, making you think she's easygoing. But then she'll bike tens of kilometers. And her eyes rarely smile. I get the feeling she'd be terrifying when she's mad. Oh, right. She's kind of like Misune. Hi. Yes, yes, no. I'm at Uchikawoka Park. Yes, mm-hmm. Oh, really? You're a lifesaver. Yes, I'll be waiting. Thank you so much. While on the phone with Ch Cheetah Bikes, she bows her head a few times towards her phone droid and then smiles at me. They said they'll come by. That's good. I know, right? And it's all because I ran into you here, Yashio-kun. Thanks. Then out of nowhere, she tries to hug me. Whoa, whoa, what the pa 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 What are you trying to do just now? I was going to hug you. You know, as a sign of my appreciation. You really don't have to. Don't be so embarrassed. Is that something you learned from your dad who grew up in France? Yep, that's right. After an eye saw nods without a care in the world, she sticks her hand out. Can I at least shake your hand? Easy enough. Akio's always grabbing out of my hands and swinging them around. Anyhow, we firmly shake hands. Thank you, Yashio. Er, what's your name again? Kaito. Kaito-kun. Oh, by the way. I finally downloaded Kill Ballad. I have it on my phone droid now. Now that she mentioned it, we did make a promise to battle not too long ago. My motivation hit zero earlier, but it's not like I'd have to focus to that hard to beat a newbie. Let's give this a go. Do you want to battle? Sure. We can play until the bike folks get here. Didn't you say you used to play fighting games, Tenoji-san? How good are you? I did nothing but study in high school, so I was pretty far removed from games back then. But in junior high, I was so good that people called me the Wild Princess. The what now? The Wild Princess. By the way, it's written using the kanji for rampaging beauty, but it's read as Wild Princess. I'm pretty sure you can read those characters like that. You can't read those characters like that. Talk about an embarrassing past. Does she actually give herself that name? If she did. Whew. Nowadays, everybody has phone droids, so arcades have gone out of fashion, right? There are still some arcades left in Akihabara. Boys and girls can go to and fro as they please. All the bright flashy lights and fun music. But if you go to the very back of the basement floor where people normally wouldn't go, there's a battle arena for only the most bloodthirsty of competitors. While most places in Tokyo are now non-smoking, this place is filled with cigarette smoke. Your eyes start to hurt just from standing still. And the warriors who are there never say a single word. They all just crowd the monitor and watch the current battle being fought. If you dare speak a word, you might get stabbed in the back. It's a total do or die atmosphere back there. It's a cruel, dirty underground of a place, just like the fighting arena from Vaki. If you give yourself to that place, you feel as though your very heart is being sharpened. Tokyo sounds terrifying. I've never 
been to an arcade before, so I'm not very familiar with that kind of vibe. But I think I kind of understand. When I fight against a strong opponent, I go into a battle mode, tunnel vision almost. Except you still haven't clued me into how strong you are, Tenoji-san. Hee-ho. I was one of the elite four in that battleground known as Akihabara. That was four years ago, though. <laughs> what is it? Elite four? Seriously? That's a little much, isn't it? You're not wrong. I didn't want to be called that either, but one of the older guys in the neighborhood liked giving out nicknames. He's the one who marked me as one of the Elite Four. Is this the same guy who decided the characters for Rampaging Beauty should be read as Wild Princess? Yep. Tonji-san lets out an embarrassed laugh. But the people who come to Akihabara all have that kind of vibe. The whole nickname thing just kind of stuck with us all. Tokyo is legit terrifying. I don't think I'd be able to survive there. I can say that I was pretty strong though. But I haven't played in a while, so I'm probably rusty. Then I'll be sure to take it easy on you. That's a lie. I'm not gonna go easy on her. Doesn't matter what my opponent's situation or skill level is. I'll crush them no matter what. That's my play style. Just saying that stuff in my head is embarrassing. I guess I'm not one to talk, am I? Okay. The smile vanishes from Tenoji-san's face the moment she grips her phone droid. Let's begin. Er, why does she suddenly sound so cold? What's with the energy in the area? She's giving off the aura of someone who knows what they're doing. I better not underestimate her. Aw, oh, man. B, 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 A, B. Yeah! I can't help but pump my fist into the air. Why? Because Tenoji-san was way stronger than I expected. Aw, oh, I was so close. You're pretty good, Kaito-kun. She's way stronger than Frau or Subaru. Hell, it's rude to compare them to her. It's not that her reaction speed is anything special. Her combo execution is subpar too. I just can't get any hits in on her. She crushes my offense. Her Yomi is just too good. It's like she's constantly betting on either choice A or choice B. It's a gamble. When she loses, she loses full throttle. But when she wins, there's no stopping her. It's a strategy that's hugely reliant on luck. And the worst part is that I don't have a reliable way of breaking through it. Which means I also have to rely on luck. She's dragging me into her pacing. But geez, what a risky tactic. A risky tactic, but... It's the one that she's perfected after years of observing opponents' habits and breathing at... And breathe... Br yep, breathing at Akiba Arcades. And it's incredibly strong. She's probably the only person on the island who can go head-to-head -head against me evenly. I'd like to think that I'm still winning 6-4. to four. Maybe if I study Tenoji-san's tactics, I'll be able to grab onto a final chance by making riskier moves. <laughs> I can't help but laugh. My spirit is dancing. Not since Misune have I met somebody so strong in real life. How can I not get hyped? The only person who's higher ranked than me online is Tajirin. The cheaters from the top three have been deleted off the leaderboards. Even with an online community of 20 million players, I rarely run into someone who is this skilled. 
can't help but be happy that I've met someone so strong in real life. Shinoji-san, you're incredible. This is your first time playing games in general ages, right? If you keep this up, you'll make it into the top 10 no problem. Whoa, thank you so much. That's really motivating. It feels good getting complimented by someone. You're not so bad yourself, Kaito-kun. Th thanks. I really wish she wouldn't praise me with such an amazing smile on her face. My heart's racing a mile a minute. What am I, a teenage girl? I had lots of fun. It's been a while, but games sure are great. Don't tell me you're done, we're just getting started. Ah, you're really raring to go. Then I shall accompany you to the end, sir. That's what I like to hear! Wanna fight her more? My adrenaline is going full blast and it feels great. This is the same feeling I get when I fight Tajirin. Or when I stood in front of the ring at Robo 1. Finals. Shit. I need to learn how to read. It feels so good that I forget about time itself. tonoji san was right. It's the same as the arcades, so there's nothing more fun than going head-to-head -head with someone directly in front of you. You can feel the way your opponent reacts directly. Their frustration when they fall behind, the clicking of their tongue, their sighs. The way they exaggerate their movement when they win. It's bloodthirsty tension that constantly has you feeling like your fight might break out or something. It puts me on the edge and heightens my concentration far beyond when I play online. The more our skills collide, the more heated and fun our fights get. One mistake can decide it all. One small opportunity can win the match. It's like walking on thin ice. Even then, I'm invigorated. My stomach feels like it might start to hurt, but I want more. <laughs> With Akio, Frau, and Subaru, I was never able to reach this level of excitement and thrill. But Tenoji-san is different. It's as if she's... As if she's... We have another match, and once again, it's a close one. I'm convinced now that Tenoji Sakon's skills aren't just luck. Just as we're about to go another round, I hear a car horn. There's a cheetah cycle truck parked in the parking lot. A familiar old man sticking his head out of the truck window and waving at us. Oh, looks like they're here. Get a hint, old man. You could have waited another half hour. Alright, I should get going. Tenoji-san puts away her phone droid and stands up to leave. I hurriedly call out to her. Um, Tenoji-san. Just call me Nay. Huh? Just kind of... Isn't it kind of plain having to say my last name all the time? Please, just call me Nay. Okay, Nai-san. When do you want to play again? Tenoji-san, or... Nason stares at me in response to my question. You mean you want to play against me again? Of course, I'd be happy to play all day against someone as skilled as you. <laughs> Hee ho, I'm flattered. If I randomly showed up at TNSC, would you play around with me? Hmm, I don't know. I do have work. But if it, I happen to have free time, maybe? That's fine with me. We both descend from the observatory, and I help Nisan load her bike onto the truck. Nisan hops into the passenger seat, and we go our separate ways. It's still August 26th, right? Yep. Uh, after eating supper, I lie down in the center of my bedroom. There's a lot I need to think about. The monopoles. The fact that I got forced into being Model 2's operator. The fact that Kill Ballad Cheaters have been dead for half a year. The final episode of Gun Barrel. What I want to do after high school. But today I have only one thing on my mind. I've been thinking about it since dinner, even when I was the, in the bath. I've been replaying a simulation of my battle against Nisan in my head over and over again. How would Nisan go on the offensive? How should I approach her? Based on the limited information I gathered from our two matches from earlier, I try to imagine her habits. Even this very moment, 
When I close my eyes, I can recreate Nisan's Bolt Vion moves. I ridiculously underestimated her. As good as I think I am, I've still got a ways to go. After all, I'm second in the world. The next time we play, I have to show her what I'm made of. You get the idea. I've basically only been thinking about Nisan all day. It's almost like I've fallen in love with her or something. I chuckle at the thought. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is another episode of Robotics Notes Elite Like Animal Crossing. I will see you all tomorrow for this, but again, uh, and uh, I'll see you all in two days for something I gotta go record. Uh, while th this is rendering, once I edit and render it, uh, there's gonna be another episode of RN Notes, Robotics Notes Notes, uh, on the 28th, so make sure you're ready for that. It's gonna be about JAXA merch, so get excited. I'll see you all tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. Nochio!